You know how we usually talk about our health on Wednesdays, and that's exactly what we're going to be discussing because tomorrow we'll be celebrating fistulas in the sense that we want to end it, obstetric fistulas in Ghana and the world as a whole. But joining me in studio to talk about obstetric fistulas is Dr. Gabriel Ganyaglo, obstetrician, gynecologist, and fistula surgeon at Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Good morning, Dr. Ganyaglo. Good morning. Madam. It's nice to have been a student, and now I'm on oh the other side. Goodness. It's very interesting. But let's start off with obstetric fistulas. I know we've had documentaries, we've spoken about it, but I think we want to break it down to the barest minimum. When we talk about obstetric fistulas, what are we talking about? Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation to your program. Mm -hmm. Obstetric fistula is basically a complication of labor. Okay. But does every woman who go into labor get fistula? No. no. It's okay. usually when labor becomes prolonged. Okay then there is a likelihood of developing obstetric fistula. Mm. But let's ask ourselves, what happens when labor becomes prolonged or what causes labor to become prolonged? Right. Quite often with the baby and the mother, there is a relativity in size of okay. the baby's weight and the mother's pelvic size. Okay. So sometimes when the baby is bigger than the mother's mm. pelvic size, then it cannot come through. Okay. And so the woman goes into labor. Mm -hmm tries to push the baby out, the baby isn't coming out. She doesn't have access to an emergency cesarean section right. and she continues trying to push this mm. baby out. And sometimes this can go on for a day or two. Okay. Eventually the baby dies in the womb mm. and usually after the delivery you notice that she's developed a fistula which is an abnormal channel that forms between the birth canal mm. and the reservoir for urine. The reservoir for urine, we all know, is called the bladder. Mm. Right. Or this abnormal channel can form between the birth canal mm. and the reservoir for the feces, which is okay. also in the back passage. So this channel is normally not supposed to be there. Mm. And when that happens, the woman develops what we call obstetric fistula. Okay, so typically when the woman has gone through this difficult labor, would you see at that particular point that the fistula has developed or it takes time for it to develop? And in that case, how will the person then present? Usually it takes about two to three days after the delivery right. for most of them. Okay. But occasionally you may know immediately after delivery. Mm. What typically happens, the story they tell us is they deliver, they lose the baby, mm. they get home, then they realize that their bed sheet is wet, maybe a day or two after the delivery. Right. And then suddenly they are confused. Mm. And they get back to the hospital because they are leaking urine continuously all the time. Mm. And they could be leaking feces continuously all the time. Mm. And this is what makes them come to hospital. Right. Is there a certain group of women, apart from those who... So if all women have gone through prolonged labor, is there a certain group who will be at a higher risk of developing the fistulas against another group? Yes. Generally, once labor is obstructed mm. and you do not have access to emergency cesarean section, okay. you are at a very high risk mm. of getting fistula. Okay. So wherever you are delivering, you should have access to CS, cesarean section should okay. the need be. Generally, we tend to say that teenagers are at greater risk. Okay. But equally at risk are the mothers who have had several deliveries. Right. Commonly, the subsequent babies are usually bigger than the previous mm. ones. And yet complacency sets in because mm. you think you've tried it before. Mm. You delivered all three at home. Mm. So why not the fourth? Mm. And often that fourth may be too big for that particular service. So it could be in teenagers. It could also be in those who have delivered severally. Mm. And generally, like we say, it's always when labor becomes difficult and you do not have access to an emergency cesarean section, you are at risk of developing obstetric fistula. Okay, so after they presented with these complaints, is there any way of helping them? Yes, help is available. Mm -hmm. I mean, obstetric fistula treatment is free countrywide, particularly when you have national health insurance nice. coverage. The challenge we have, though, is that the women do not report early mm. and they do not often report at all. However, wherever you are, if after delivering you notice that you are leaking urine, it is embarrassing, mm. yes. And quite often the husbands abandon them because mm. then they cannot bear the stench of urine or the stench of feces, so they leave them alone. Mm. Then 
traditionally you go back from whence you came right. and that is to the family house mm. in the rural setting when this happens they get to the family house nobody can put up with the stench right. of urine or the stench of feces so mm. they are treated at arm's length and given a part of the cottage remote <laughs> from everywhere right. but probably closer to the hen coop or the animal pen this is the way they are treated mm. they are not supposed to be seen in public they are not supposed to tarnish the image of the family mm. And so they are really not counted among people, but they are alive and living. Yeah. So stigmatized to this extent, most of them go into hiding. Okay. This is a challenge we have. Okay. The fistula patients are in very rural areas, very remote places, hiding, first to leave the house, go to the bush with their calabash or uh, <laughs> potty to go and sit on for the urine to leak, come back home late in the evening to sneak into their corner of the compound. It's a miserable life okay. for them. So they don't come out, and we do not get to know mm. until it is sometimes very mm. late. So yes, the message is that there is a lot of hope, a mm. lot of help for fistula. Several uh, people have been trained now to repair okay. obstetric fistula countrywide. There is a team based in Kolibu that goes around the countryside. Okay. There is another team in Konfanoji Teaching Hospital that does the same. Nice. Upper West Region, Wild Regional Hospital, they have a fistula surgeon okay. there. Yendi Municipal Hospital has a fistula surgeon. Even Kofurudwa, very close okay. to us, this uh, gynecologist there has competencies in fistula surgery. Okay. So there is help around okay. the place. The best center so far in the country is the Mercy Women's Catholic Hospital okay. in Mankasim which is bigger and has more capacity, more facilities. Okay. But Tamale Fistula Center is also there. Mm -hmm. So there are specialized centers where they can be treated. Okay. But by and large, nearly all the teaching hospitals, all the regional hospitals mm -hmm. in this country have people who can treat fistula. Right. So we encourage anybody listening to us who knows a patient who has fistula to kindly report for treatment. I think that's very important because particularly if the treatment is free, I don't see why you wouldn't want your relative or your friend to get that. So certainly on that note, make sure you're asking anybody who you've heard about who has such a problem to visit any hospital in their locality to make sure they get some relief. But let's go to prevention because we Thank always you. say prevention is better than cure. Is there any way of identifying women who are at that higher risk of getting it and preventing it? This is a very, very good question. Thank you for asking. If the woman attends antenatal clinic, mm. it is easy to predict. We may not be 100% certain, but it's easy to predict. Generally, when the woman is less than 1.5 meters tall, mm. then there's a likelihood that the pelvis may be small. I'm okay. not talking about anybody in particular. <laughs> so there's a no, likelihood. No, I'm just going to go to that because, yes. of course, if you don't go for antenatal, you may not even know your height Thank in the you. first place. Thank you. <laughs> so this is the most important thing, antenatal yeah. care. Okay. Now, let's backtrack a bit. Mm. Shouldn't we make sure that the pregnancy that will result in fistula is wanted in the first place? Right. So okay. family planning is mm. key. If we have fewer pregnancies, there will be a lower risk right. of a pregnancy obstructing to become fistula. Mm. So let's talk about family planning. Let's make sure that the pregnancies are wanted. Mm. Granted that the pregnancy is wanted, the woman must attend antenatal care. Mm. And following antenatal care, the data shows that more than 90% of our women attend antenatal care, but fewer than that number, less than about 70%, will deliver in a health facility mm. attended by a skilled personnel. We still have the traditional mm. understanding and mid surrounding beds, right. so people still want to deliver at home. Mm. And it's very common in a lot of rural areas in this country. So. Prevention, yes, let's attend antenatal care, but let's also try and deliver in the hospital. Mm. But for me, the bottom line to prevention is girl-child education. Certainly. Because the girl who is educated may get economically empowered mm. through a well-paying job mm. and will be able to negotiate their relationship issues in the marriage. Mm. Half of our women in the rural areas will have to wait on their husband for decisions concerning their reproductive health. Right. And the men don't have a uterus. Mm. They won't understand pregnancy. Mm. So they look at it purely in economic and terms and availability of a woman. Yeah. Unfortunately, women are still seen in rural areas as commodities, quote unquote. And so the attitude to mm. treating their issues are relegated right. to the background. So let's educate the girl child. Mm. 
Let's get family planning on board. Mm -hmm. Let's go for antenatal care mm -hmm. and let's buy home. Let's try to deliver in hospital. Right. Then the hospitals must now be ready because when the women come there, we should have emergency caesarean right. sections available and in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes some cases have resulted from our own facilities due to delays. Right. And then you now want to talk about the bigger issues of facilities in our health facilities, the road network, mm -hmm. the social infrastructure. Fistula in this country is very common in the mm. northern regions right. because the communities are very far apart mm. and they are not motorable all year round. Right. God forbid if your labor starts at midnight. Mm. You know, you have to walk to the riverside to wait for the canoe to arrive in the morning with yeah. the sunrise, cross over to the other bank before you continue to the hospital. This is very common in this country. You mm. sit in the metropolitan areas, you don't realize mm. that there are lots of women in rural Ghana who even after they've decided to go to hospital, mm. the road network, the road mm -hmm. infrastructure. Mm. So overall, to end fistula, we need to feed it into the global development plan of the country. And I'm sure we'll see an end in the nearest future. I'm sure on that note, we all pray that we do see an end because it's a very debilitating, you know, um, disease. And once it affects a woman, it affects even the whole society and what we look forward to. Because every woman must go and deliver and come home safely with their child so we can all be happy for them. On that note, let me say thank you to you, Dr. Gabriel Ganyaglo. He's an obstetrician, gynecologist, a fistula surgeon with Kolebu Teaching Hospital. We have been dealing with the topic of obstetric fistula. Make sure you tell a friend who has this condition to go visit a hospital in the area because there certainly is help out there for you. We'll